guys. Simon from TeslaLightShows.io here. Um, look, I'm super excited. Uh, this morning we received uh, this box. Uh, this contains a rear console media system uh, for the Model Y and the Model 3. Um, today we'll unbox this, we'll see how it looks, we'll go then and install it. They reckon it's about 15 minutes, uh, so we'll prove that uh, as a novice, right or wrong. Um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so absolutely no endorsements here. You can buy these rear consoles from multiple retail outlets, but I personally tend to go straight to the factory by going via AliExpress. That's just because they've got such a great range of aftermarket products, and if you don't mind waiting a few weeks for the delivery, I think we waited about two weeks for this to arrive, then you can potentially save upwards of 50% off the recommended retail price. This one in particular retails for around $600, however I snapped it up for just less than $350. But like I said, no endorsements here, wherever you buy your aftermarket products, shop savvy to get the best deal. Now here we are in the back of the car ready to take off the factory fitted air vent. I'd recommend using a soft covered tool so that we don't damage the car, but it does seem quite easy to get between the seams of the plastic. So the air vent does come off relatively simply with a good tug. But the removal's actually only taken about a minute and there's absolutely no damage to the air vent or to the remaining arm console. This exposes the only connection that we have at the moment, which is the USB power. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just remove that now and then we can release the entire unit. So the removal of the actual lower casing is the part that I'm most concerned about. Um, it's a lot tighter than the vent, so we'll go ahead and use our tool again. Um, <laughs> I'm using a rusty old screwdriver, but it should do the job. Okay, so now we've exposed the cables at the rear. These are effectively the car's main artery. Um, and into that we're going to connect up the replacement console. This bit's a bit fiddly because the female side is actually fixed to the chassis. The cables supplied, as we can see in the box, are actually quite stiff. These connectors allow the media unit to tap directly into the main data artery so that it can then communicate with the onboard computer. That turned out to be not so bad. Um, now the extended cable fits quite neatly into that gap. Next we'll have to feed the cable up into the new unit um, using the hole on the left uh, which will pop out directly underneath the air vent. The data cable is quite long so feeding it through is really quite simple. Um, it's a lot of slack on there. Here we have the replacement unit. We'll connect up the power and the data cables and hopefully then it should be just quite easy to pop in place. This is our female power connector. Now this should feed the uh, USB sockets and this is the data cable that will link the unit to the onboard computer. You can go ahead and make those connections now. Um, they have catches so it's quite nice. They just snap into place which is reassuring. So we'll go ahead and feed the excess cable back through the hole so that we don't block any airflow um, and do the same thing with the power cable on the other side. Okay, so now this should just be a case of reseating the uh, the unit into place. Well, wow, that looks really cool. Um, the kids are going to love this. So 
So from the home page, the first thing that we're going to need to do is connect the car unit up to the Bluetooth. Select Bluetooth from the list which brings us to the Bluetooth menu. To connect, we're going to select the car's Bluetooth signature. Then moving to the front screen, we'll connect the unit by selecting the Bluetooth icon and tapping Connect Phone. We'll then press Start Search to find the Bluetooth signal and pair. Okay, so we have the unit Bluetooth popped up, so we'll go ahead and select that and wait for the two sides to connect. The connection's been made, so now we're good to go. Here we are back on the default control screen, which has a number of functions that we can control now from the rear console. We'll start first and foremost with media. We have the volume icons here on the left, volume up, volume down. We have play or pause, as well as skip forward and skip back. It seems that the volume settings are set at zero by default, so the sound is not coming from the speakers. In order to fix this, we'll select the start icon from the bottom left, which takes us through to the app menu, where we can go onto settings, select audio from the list. From here, we can slide the master volume up to its maximum. Back at the control panel, we can see the USB options. The first is for uploading multimedia files, and the remaining two are power only. They are USB-C as well as USB-A. Whilst the angles of the air vents are fixed, one of the nice features of the air conditioning controls is the ability to control both the rate of flow and the temperature. We can feel that the airflow at 40% is definitely not being restricted by the smaller vents. And using the slider to increase the speed, it's certainly blasting through as much as the factory fitted unit. We have some of the same functions that we have on the front screen with regards to keeping the air conditioning going on exit, the biohazard settings, uh, and being able to turn the ambient lighting on and off. Focusing on the bottom icons, we can turn the AC on and off. We can circulate the air within the cabin, and now we can control the rear heated seats. We can turn on each seat individually, adjust the temperature of the seat, or just turn them off completely. The fan icon brings us back to the main air conditioning control panel. The seatbelt warning overview. And finally, from the bottom right, we can turn the temperature of the rear by tapping plus and minus. Selecting the start icon at the bottom left takes us again through to the app menu. As we can see now, it's basically an Android touchscreen tablet uh, with a number of preset apps. Starting with the left-hand side multimedia USB, we can play music. However, as we can't connect to Bluetooth headphones using this device, you would use uh, the car's own sound system. Video has the same local and USB principle as music, but it does have a demo version with somebody cutting some vegetables pretty badly as a preview. We can control the balance of music but before we move on to the media apps, we'll need to connect to the network. I'll be connecting to my mobile hotspot, as I imagine you would. You can find all the settings from this menu, connectivity, display, navigation settings, with the additional system settings, such as changing language or time and date. Right, now that we're connected to the internet, we can access the normal functions of the Chrome browser. We can download apps from the Google Play Store, where you can find most of your favorite apps, but I have to say not all. Um, for example, I wasn't able to find Netflix, which is quite inconvenient, and I don't think you can play it through Chrome either. Uh, but there are plenty of multimedia uh, apps that we can use to stream. And that's it. So we've unboxed, we've installed, and we've gone through the functionality. I'd love to hear any comments you've got. Please leave those down below. I will read them. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next video. 
So I'll play around with this for the next couple of weeks and then release another video where we can review the actual unit. So it's a massive thank you from me and until next time, goodbye.